What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another episode of PS4 Jailbreak Tutorials, episode 5. So in this episode, I'm going to be showing you guys how to install retail game updates onto your retail copies of your games, whether you have it on a disc or you have your game bought from the store and you still have it on your PS4, uh, onto a jailbroken PS4. Obviously, in normal cases, on a normal PS4, you don't need a video on how to get an update, right? You just check for updates or... You go on your PS4 and then updates will automatically be downloading from PlayStation servers. So the reason I'm covering this is I did want to include this in the previous episode, which showed you how to install games, DLC and updates as fake package files. But if you have the game as a retail copy of the game, like on a disc or from the store, then you can't install fake package DLC or updates onto that copy of the game because it's a retail package file and retail package files are not compatible with fake package files and vice versa. So in order to install an update onto your retail game, you need a retail update to go with it. There can be some problems with that. So I wanted to cover that cover that here. Also, you're not gonna be able to get DLC unless you already have you know paid for the DLC and you have the license for it on your account. Uh, if you have a retail game, if you really want DLC, then you'll have to and delete the game and just download a fake package version with some fake package DLC or you can turn your game from a retail package file into a fake package file by dumping it which I will be covering in a future video pretty soon. So that is also an option but just to cover quickly here how you can install game updates on retail copies of your games on a jailbroken PS4. So one of the easiest ways obviously if we check for updates right here on this disk version of the game, I'm getting a cannot connect to server and that's because we're blocking the connections to Sony's servers with the DNS addresses from Al Azov uh, that we set up on our network settings. You can remove those if I set up the internet connection using an easy, the easy option, then it will just use the default DNS. And then when I check for updates, it should actually find some updates there, as you can see, added to downloads. Uh, Black Ops uh, right there and of course it's also going to try and get me to download the latest system software version which is something we really do not want to do because if we do that then we're not going to have a jailbroken PS4 anymore so we're going to want to make sure that we uh, cancel and delete that and also make sure you have the other precautions like all the automatic uploads and downloads are unchecked in your settings and that you have the disable updates payload running as long as you do that, you should be good to go. So downloading game updates this way from Sony servers has one major problem, which is that if the game update requires a higher firmware than 6.72 to run, then when it installs, you're not gonna be able to run the game without updating your system software version. So once this 1.33 update installs to the game, it will update the game, but when I try and run the game, it's going to say that I need to update my firmware version before I can run the game because the game update actually requires firmware version higher than 6.72 to run. So that is not great. So this method of downloading from just Sony servers is only going to work on maybe older games where the latest update for that older game is still compatible with 6.72 because the game hasn't been updated in a long time. Uh, so that is like the only kind of scenario where uh, this method is going to work. So let's just go ahead and cancel and delete that then. Uh, set up our network connection again just to uh, put back in our DNS settings so that we can uh, not get pestered for system software updates every time we start up our PS4, which is rather annoying. So I always add our DNS addresses in right here. Or, well, I, I normally just add one because one will do, but you can add both of them in as well if you want. So, there we go. So, now if I go back and check for updates, we should be blocked. There we go. Okay, so to get older updates, if we head over to my computer here, you're going to go to this website, ps4database.io, and then go to the title name search, and then search for your name of the game. So, I've got Black Ops 3, so I'm just going to search for Black Ops, and it gets me all of the different versions right here. So as you can see, there's lots of different title ID versions. So you need to make sure that you get the right one. If you have the disc copy of the game, you can actually find the title ID on the spine of the case at the bottom. It should say CUSA and then a five digit number. So you can just check that. So my one is this CUSA02624. 
So that is the correct one for me. And I obviously I have the European version. So make sure you have the right region version as well, because as I explained, it's the same thing with fake package files as well. As I explained in the previous episode, uh, you need to have the same region version and the same title ID in order for the patch to actually work with your copy of the game. So we're going to view patches and information once you find the right one. So as you can see here, 1.33 is the latest update for Black Ops 3 as of when I'm recording this video, and it does require 7.00 in order to run. So if we did actually install that update, we wouldn't be able to run the game because you have to be on 7.00 or higher in order to actually use that uh, game update on the game. So what we can do though is there's this older available patches. If you select this option, it might have some older patches stored here as well. So as you can see, 1.32 is stored here. So if we click on that, you can see that the minimum firmware for 1.32 is 6.72. So the exact firmware version that we're on. So um, as long as it's, uh, you know, 6.72 or lower, then you'll be able to install and use that game update with your game. So in order to download it, I highly recommend you get a program called JDownloader2, which is a great download manager. So JDownloader2 will be linked in the description. You just go to the link grabber, because as you can see, all of these, um, uh, this whole update is split into these four gigabyte parts. So you have to download every single part one by one. So it's quicker if you can just right click, copy link address, and then J Downloader 2 will copy that to the to the link grabber. Uh, so I can just right click the next one, copy link address, copy link address, uh, and just do it with every single one here until we have them all downloaded or not downloaded, but we have them all added to J Downloader. So there they are there, zero to six, all added successfully. And then you just hit the play button to start downloading them. And you know, J Downloader 2 is great because if your internet cuts out halfway through and then your internet, you know, comes back, then it will just resume the download from where it left off. You know, you won't have to re-download it again from scratch. So definitely a useful program that I highly recommend you use. Also, if you're not able to find any previous versions on ps4database.io, there is also this list right here on xn-xce.cc forward slash package wip.txt. Again, it will be linked in the description. It has got a huge uh, dump of download links from Sony servers for lots of older games and updates. But these are all retail package files, so don't bother downloading any of the actual games from here because they're not going to work unless you have a proper license for them. Yeah, but you can download the updates from here. So like if I was looking for the Black Ops uh, 3 update again, I would just search for the title ID 02624. Okay, so... That's the actual game right there. So if we scroll down a bit further, there you go. There's all the updates right there. So this one actually has update 108, 1.12, 1.13, uh, 1 14, 17, 19, 20, 21, 23. It's got, yeah, it's pretty much got almost all the updates right there. So um, yeah, so if you can't find any older patches on here, then you can find them potentially here. And uh, you can also look around on the internet. There's forum posts on websites like PSX Hacks and um, probably places like Dark Software and other places that might have older updates linked on their website somewhere. So you can have a look around for those. Once you have all of the parts downloaded, as you can see here, I've got them all here. I just copied them all into one directory. So they're all right here. Because they're split into these different parts, it creates a bit of a problem when it comes to installing them. So if I wanted to actually install this onto the game, I could not do it in this form with the debug settings package installer because the debug settings package installer requires you to have the update in one part. Any package files have to be in one file for the uh, debug settings package installer. So because they're split into multiple parts, I can't just install them one by one until they're all installed. It's not going to work. You're going to get errors. It's just not going to happen. So what you can do is you're, there's two options. You can either take the long way of merging all of these parts back into one file and then put it on a USB drive and install it with the debug settings. Or if you're able to use the remote package installer, it does have the ability to install all of these different parts without having to merge them. Uh, which takes quite a while. So being able to skip that step 
is definitely a bonus. I'm not sure how many package senders or package linker apps or have the functionality built in. So mine kind of does. I mean, it does, but you know, the way you have to do it is a bit awkward, but it does work. I'm going to use PS4 package sender. I'll link it in the description. So if we go ahead and run this, I will also show you how to merge the package files and install it with a USB if you prefer. So what we're going to do is drag all the package files inside. Now you don't want to drag from say part four because then they're going to be in the wrong order and you're going to have four, five, six, zero, one, two, three, which is wrong. Um, so just make sure when you highlight them all that you drag from underscore zero, the first one, uh, that way they will appear in the list in the correct order. So once you have them all in the correct order, and if you're wondering how you set up the package remote package installer and this package sender app, if you've never used it before, remember this tutorial is part of a series of tutorials that are linked in the video description and in the cards in the top right hand corner. So I went over this in like episode three. I also went over this in the last episode, episode four. So you can watch those videos if you haven't got the remote package installer set up yet. So we're going to head on to our PS4. And of course, we're going to run the internet browser, go on the exploit page as you normally would, and run the 6.72 Mira Unofficial to use the remote package installer. If you don't have Mira Unofficial as an option, then just run the normal Mira payload or run the HEN payload, H-E-N. If you do have Mira Unofficial as an option, then run that one. So yeah, once you've, once you've ran the payload, I already have it running right now. So we're going to run the remote package installer. Not sure why that's coming up. That should not be coming up because we're blocking the updates. Hopefully it works if I do update later. Okay, so we'll select uh, part zero and we will send the package file. Oh, okay, it's working. Never mind. As you can see, it starts sending it. Now you might be thinking, okay, it's only sending the first part. That is not true. If you head into the uh, notifications, you can see it's downloading the update and you can see the size of the update is 26.6 gigabytes whereas the first part is only four gigabytes. So that means it's not sending just the first part, it's actually sending all of the parts to save yourself a lot of time. You don't have to merge the package files. You can just put all the parts onto the package sender, select the first part, send it, and then it will send all of the parts one by one until you have them all installed. Obviously they all need to be named exactly the same with underscore zero and then the next one underscore one, etc. Uh, in order for it to work. But as you can see, it is installing the update. So that is one way of installing the retail updates manually using the remote package installer. All right, so there we go. We are installing, done, update is installed. And as you can see, we are on 1.32. So it has been applied successfully to my retail copy of the game, my disc version. So we do have the update installed. So that's quite simply Probably the easiest way, in my opinion, to get the updates installed with the least amount of hassle. But obviously not everybody has the best of luck using the remote package installer. So I will show you the other method of installing them by merging them into one part. So you can install them using the debug settings package installer. In order to do that, we're going to use this package merging tool, which I'll put in the same directory as the, as the parts. And uh, obviously it'll be linked in the description along with everything else you need. And then we're going to create a folder called input um, or whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to put all of the package files in there and then drag this directory on top of the tool and then hit run. And there you go. It starts merging all of the different parts into one file. It's going to take some time, but once it's done, you should end up with one package file that um, is the entire update. All right, so there we go. After it's done, you can see we have this one right here, dash merged, which is the full size, 26 gigs, uh, which is all of these parts combined into one file. So once you have that, you can then plug in a USB drive or external hard drive, some kind of USB external storage and copy the package file into uh, the USB drive. So do we have enough space on here? 56 gigs. Yeah, we're good. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the merged package file into the root of the USB drive. Don't put it in any folders. And again, make sure the USB drive is formatted in XFAT format. Okay, so on the PS4, I went ahead and uh, deleted the game and put the disc back in. So we're back on 1.00 again, base version of the game. And then I'm going to head into the debug settings, game package installer. And we're going to install the merged package file here for 
and it is installing. Now, it's also important to note that you don't actually need Mira or Hen running in order to install this. You can actually enable the debug settings using other payloads that will just enable the debug settings. So a lot of people think that when you run Mira, that enables the debug settings and that's pretty much all it does. But no, actually when Mira is running, it allows you to install fake package files. Normally, if you just enable the debug settings without Mira or Hen, it won't actually allow you to install fake package files. They'll, it'll say that they're corrupted or damaged, but retail package files like this will install with just the debug settings without Mira or Hen running. So there is a distinction there between the, the just the normal debug settings enabled and running Mira alongside the debug settings enabled as well. So, all right, so there we go. We are done installing the update. And as you can see, it has successfully installed. So if we go ahead and run uh, Black Ops 3 now and show that it is working once it gets past the loading screen. Yeah, there we go. Finally, so the game is running. As you can see, no error messages, no requiring me to do the latest system software update because this update actually works on 6.72. Doesn't require a higher firmware version. And uh, yeah, obviously an update like this is high enough to install all the DLC with as well. But of course, you'll need to turn it into a fake package file for that. But uh, yeah, so not uh, I know this wasn't the most interesting video, I guess, in the series so far because, you know, it's just installing a regular update on a normal game, but I thought it was important to cover. I had a few people asking me about it, so I did want to cover that here. But don't worry, there's going to be a lot more interesting stuff coming pretty damn soon. I'm going to be showing you guys how to run games off external hard drives, like uh, fake package games and stuff off your external hard drive. I'm also going to show you how to dump your retail games, like a game like this on disk, and turn it into a fake package file so that you can actually you know run it from the hard drive without the disk and be able to install fake package updates and dlc to it so we'll be covering that in a couple of episodes as well so yeah there's a lot more coming i'm going to be showing you how to install ps2 games emulators uh, modding your games with trainers mod menus converting pc mods to run on the ps4 versions of certain games and also show you how to run linux on your ps4 and play pc games on linux on the ps4 and other emulators on linux uh, with the ps4 as well so lots still to come in the series so hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful if you did please leave a like and subscribe and i'll hopefully see you guys in the next one